everybody. Coming up on Sports Central, we have Lucas. We have Andrew from the Florida Tropics and the Lakeland Tropics, our professional leagues here in Polk County. Also, Jamel Cornelius coming in, state champions in the Babe Ruth League. Check us out, everybody. We'll be back with Sports Central right after this. Hey everybody, and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson, along with my co-host, Mr. Hank Longo. And Hank, wow, what an exciting weekend last weekend oh, yes. with the opening of the Elite Cable Park. What'd you think of all that? Oh, well, I thought it was great, and we want to thank BSN Sports for hosting this first segment of Sports Central. And of course, Under Armour as well, one of yeah. our one of our major spot, sponsors. Yeah. What a weekend! I mean, we have been waiting so long for this. Elite Cable Park to open at Lake Myrtle. At Lake Myrtle, and um, it's just spectacular. So it's finally underway, and hope some great things go on there. And then they've got Tantrums Restaurant there, which is fantastic, and you can go have a great meal right there at the lake, and uh, um, you know watch everybody yeah. you know wakeboarding and doing all the fun stuff at the Cable Park. And we'll have some footage on that a little later on in the show, so you can check it out. Yeah, that's fantastic stuff. Well, we do have soccer to talk about, and of course, on the heels of the Women's uh, World Cup victory, second one in a row for Team USA, we have the Tropics in the house today, Andrew Ross. But right now, we have Lucas Teixeira. And Lucas, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Originally from Brazil. And uh, you're kind of a famous guy in the world of futsal. What <laughs> yeah. the heck is futsal? <laughs> futsal is a small cyber game in Brazil. It's very popular. It's like basketball over here. Mm -hmm. So it's the most popular sport in Brazil. So we play all the time. Really? Yes. So what is it? I mean, what kind of a sport is it? Is it's it? soccer, but we play in the hard surface, like in basketball court. Okay. So with goals, normal rules like outdoor, but it's small sided in the hard surface. And it's really, I mean, that's popular in Brazil. Higher pace, small sided, just 5v5. So we play less numbers and higher pace. And so um, is it like a basketball court floor? Exactly. So um, how long is the game? Because I know when you're out on the grass you're running for what 90 minutes and you know you're you're out there the whole time. What kind of time periods are they having um, in this sport? Food so it's like two times of two, 20 minutes time, halves. So, but every time that the ball goes out, clock stops like basketball. So they're doing the time is probably an hour and a half that we play futsal. And is it how is it on the legs, the knees, and all that being on a yeah? A that's a lot sport. of impact. So the knees and ankles and everything. I had like multiple fractures in my in my feet because of that. A lot of impact, but it's a lot of fun. And I think it's the reason that the Brazilians are so good in soccer because we are so used to, to, place, to play in tiny spaces. So when you go to the, play outdoor, you have so much space that's like, oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some good stuff. Well, you know, your current position, you go from, from futsal, you know, champion in, in Brazil, to now the head coach of the tropics. What, how was that transition? That, that, had to be, that had to be a challenge for you. Yeah, I'm here since day one with the indoor team. Mm -hmm. So it was really natural for me go to the indoor, futsal, indoor, and outdoor. Mm -hmm. So that's my first time coaching, but it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you guys are doing pretty doggone well, haven't you? Go 16 and 0 so far. Right? Yeah, for the first season, it's not easy to start like that because it's a new league, new team, and new everything. Mm -hmm. But I give a lot of credit to the players and the organization that put the team together. Mm -hmm. And we, we call Lake Middle home, and we're having a lot of sisters playing over there, so it's been a great season for us. And, and now you're moving on to the final four in, uh, is it Weatherford? Yeah, Weatherford, Texas. Okay, okay Weatherford, uh, you check my notes, in Texas, so it's going to be nice and warm there too. So wh how are you preparing for that? Because that's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty hot over here too, though. Yeah. So <laughs> Humid. I think we have a good preparation with the team, and one thing that I know about our team is that the guys are always hungry for more. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we have in our team, and 
every game matters. So we had this season like the perfect season because we treat every game as the most important game. So the next one now is the final four. So I think the guys are ready and it's going to be a, a very interesting challenge. So you're in the final four. Who are the other three teams that are playing? Uh, right now, we're probably going to play against the Bavarians, the uh, Milwaukee team. And the other team is Massachusetts United. So they play this Saturday. And whatever wins, we're going to play against these teams. And it's going to be pretty exciting. The Bavarians from Milwaukee, huh? Exactly. Now, there's a lot of Germans there. I think 65% uh, of Wisconsin's exactly. population are Germans. They have a lot of tradition over there. It's a 90 years old club. Yeah. So they are the actual champions from the UPSL. So yeah. it's going to be a big challenge. Like now it. you say they've been playing for 90 years soccer up in Wisconsin? Yes. Wow. That's, I mean, that's just because soccer, the reason that's it's, it's fascinating to me is because soccer in the United States has just really started taking off for what, maybe the, the last, last decade. 10? 15 years yeah. that you know soccer um, you know has gotten in the spotlight so for them to be playing for that long it's, it's really a tradition as well it's the heritage they just brought it you know it's a game they played you know back in Germany if you have so much of a German population that they yeah. just you know kept the ball rolling when they came over here fantastic yeah well you yeah I can't go there he's not on a family show so <laughs> <laughs> but a uh, couple of guys is it Diegas? Diegas. Yeah, Ricardo Diegas and Victor Parilla. Pajeras. Okay, I got it pretty close. A real dynamic duel here. Yeah, they 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 been playing together for the past eight years, mm -hmm. so they have a good connection, and it's have it's good to have guys that are used to play together for a long time. Right. So make easy my job. Yeah. And these guys are doing amazing. Not just these two guys, but I think one of the reasons we are in this position right now, that's because we play as a team. So when I look to that pictures, I can see so many players, and these two guys are doing such an amazing job. Well, there's, talk to us a little bit about, you know, as a follow-up to that, the, the tropics, there's an indoor tropics and there's an outdoor tropics. Exactly. Since you're the expert, explain to the audience what the difference is and, and who coaches the other team and, you know, let's... Exactly. I'm still a player for the indoor team, mm -hmm. so I still have a contract with the tropics playing. So the coach is the Clay Roberts. He's the coach for the Southeastern University. Okay. He's a great coach, and we just coming from the, our fourth season together. Mm -hmm. And it's a different game. It's like a hockey game. We have boards, and it's a higher pace, higher pace game, and that's a lot of fun. That's a, such a good environment for the kids, for the families. And outdoor, it's the old school. So we have the grass, the field. It's different. A lot of space. So I think both games are very interesting. And we have now fans that go, love to go to the indoor game, but now they have a lot of fans in the outdoor game. So we have a good fan base. Our last game in, that we played was five hours drive, and we have 50 fans over there. So wow, it was they great. drove five hours? They drove to five hours to be there with us. Wow, that's fantastic. And it was fantastic. So yeah, where was it? It was at, uh, what was Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Yes. That's, that's a real tough duty there. Yeah. Savannah's a great place. Yeah, it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful city. Oh, I love it city. up there. Definitely. Absolutely. So coming down, the, you know, coming down the pike, season kind of wraps up here at the end of the month. Right? Was that 27th that I read? Yeah, uh, the term begins on the 27th. It begins on the 27th. Guys kind of go their separate ways, do, do whatever. When, when do you start getting back together, training for, you know, the next next season yeah the next cycle after the last game we're gonna sit and think what what is gonna be the plans for the next season but preseason probably gonna start just in the, the next summer so okay it's gonna take a while yeah well, but we have indoor starting in November so half of our team play indoor so that's why we have the tropics we have outdoor indoor several teams so we can have fun year-round yeah now, how old are these players? What What is the age range for the guys My on My group, team? that's a men's team that's like 20 years old to 34, 35, so. Wow. Yeah. yeah they great, great way of staying <laughs> in shape. I know he's got something sizzling on going on there. I can, <laughs> I can feel it coming. Did you ever play soccer? No. Didn't you? No. I played when I was a little kid. 
Yeah, yeah I like that. I would like to play soccer. I just think it'd be a great way to just get in shape because you're just running up and down. A That's lot, for sure. You know? <laughs> I mean, really, I think it would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's really catching on in the United States. Have you seen a big difference since coming to the United States and? you know, and the growth and, and popularity now, you know, we're seeing it in the media, but, you know, amongst the uh, citizens, you know, just the, us commoners. Yeah, to be honest, when I came from Brazil, I wasn't expecting to be that popular over here. Mm -hmm. And one thing that amazes me is the kids, that so many kids playing soccer right now. Mm -hmm. So when we go to the parks on Saturday morning, Sunday morning, we s you can see like thousands of kids playing and all the parents, the grandparents, and like, yeah. so it's way bigger than I was expecting here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's amazing because in Brazil it's pretty popular, but here it's becoming so big and people are liking so much that I don't think there's limits for soccer over here. So the but future is bright. What's great about it is it gets these kids outside. And you know, you get away it, from their doggone They're away from phones. these phones Jeez. and they're out getting some exercise. They're outside in nature and they're running around getting some good exercise and getting in shape. And I think it's fantastic because at Lake Myrtle, you know, the, the sports complex where our headquarters are, uh, it's, it's constantly packed with kids playing and it's just so refreshing to see all these young people engage in an activity that's so healthy. So well, it's going to be interesting too from, from your perspective, you know, out, where, out at the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex where the Florida Youth Soccer Association, of course that's the largest sports governing body in, mm -hmm. in the state of Florida, 115,000 kids registered, but there'll be a new stadium there in a year and a half. Is that, is that a big deal for you guys? That's such a big deal, and I, I can tell right now the players and like the coaching staff, we feel so comfortable and so good playing there because it's such a good atmosphere and you mm -hmm. have such nice fields over there, good environment, yes. and everything is beautiful over there. So for us as the players and coaches, it's it's nice, it's really nice. Yeah. And we are undefeated over there, so we don't want to get out of no, there. We <laughs> don't want to get out of that. <laughs> that's uh, Lucas, fantastic. That was, yeah, that's, that's fantastic stuff. Really appreciate the insights, especially, you know, coming from futsal, you know, then into soccer. I mean, you're an elite athlete, you're an elite athlete. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter, hey, congratulations. Thanks so much for joining us. We really Go appreciate win. it. Go win. Go bring home that title. Yeah, win, win that, that, and then we're going to have you back on because I want to hear about the hear about the tour. Thank you. Hear I about appreciate the adventure. it. Yeah. You bet. Well, everybody, we've got a lot of a lot of stuff coming up, some real variety. Um, one of the events that took place a couple of weeks ago, in fact, it was uh, exactly two weeks ago, it was the Wheels of Steel motorcycle show, antique motorcycle show, at the RP Funding Center. Pretty cool. Got a lot of stuff going on there, and, and including my good friend Barbie Simpson Wynn. She was there uh, rooting them on and, and so on and so forth. We've got some great footage here. Check it out. The Wheels of Steel. Motorcycle Show. We'll be back right after this. First off, I was honored that Jason asked me to be a part of it. Um, kind of what we just talked about. I'm hoping that the people that walk through the door today um, and the kids that come through the door, and I, you know, I've been introduced to a couple of kids this, you know, today, and I've asked them to come by the shop and check out what we do. It's, I'm hoping that, I know what he's trying to do, and he wants to get more people involved in what we do, and he doesn't want to see this industry go away, just like I don't want to either, and this show, I think is great, especially in Florida, being indoors. I know he's trying to bring it to like, a higher class standard with, with more custom motorcycles and not so much of like the carny type shows that we do. So um, I think it's great. I think it's great what they're doing here. And Jason came and approached me in, in uh, Leesburg and he asked me, hey Tom, would you like to be part of this show, Wheels of Steel? And I was like, well, explain it to me a little bit because I'm already up this way and for me to go back and forth and travel, sometimes, you know, it gets in the way. 
So Jason was nice enough to explain it to me and introduce me to the people that were going to be part of it. And he said there's going to be other bike builders. And I, that, that, then that brought me onto it. I said, this is going to be something neat because we need to get more of this stuff out there. So when Jason approached me, I said, you know, this is going to be cool, Jay. I'm part of this. And he was really happy to have me part of this. And I was really happy to make this happen because I like to see this kind of stuff grow. I like this Polk County. It's an awesome county. The officers are really nice. They got their bikes on display out here. Super cool guys to talk to. They're real people. And they want this to happen out here. They want to bring this audience here. They want to make it happen. And I'm pretty happy that, that, they, that I got invited to this biker build off. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, the crowd's beautiful. There's some nice bikes out there. Some pretty badass builders. Got some nice equipment out there. Uh, I got some competition out there against me. when you say art, it is art, and it is moving art, is to keep recreating yourself and to, and to keep moving forward and to keep, all right, I built this bike, so how am I gonna top this one? How am I gonna do this to make this one different? It's, I don't know, it's tough. It's a tough deal, and then when you have, like my shop, I probably have 50 bikes in there that we're building. So for me to, to keep my mind, I had 50 different projects, and keep my mind on 50 different people Plus the people that I do build bikes for, I try to incorporate them into their builds. So I try to like hang out with you, get your vibe, what you what you think's fun and cool, and I try to put that in there. And I don't tell you I'm doing that, so that when I do present this bike to you, because I never send pictures and stuff like that, that like they're blown away, they love it. So a lot of my a lot of my stuff. Sometimes I never get blank canvases. I get pre-existing bikes. Um, when I look at something like I already see the end result, what I want to do, and like I'm not. I can't draw a stick figure, man. I'm, I can't draw anything. I'm horrible at drawing. I swear to you, I am. I, even my signature looks like a chicken scratch, you know? And uh, I don't know, I, with these bikes and projects, I just see the end results and I know what I want. And I know what the customer's gonna want. And I know that I'm gonna wow them because I'm gonna give them more than what they expect, their expectations. And then working with my painter, Ryan Hathaway, He's just like me, we're both humble dudes and we just like doing stuff for people to put smiles on people's faces. So he always blows my expectations away with, um, with paint jobs and the stuff that he does and we work so well together. We've been out there for a long time, it's just as long as those other guys in the industry, the Indian Larrys, the West Coast Choppers guys. We're on the East Coast, though we don't get that publicity like we do on the West Coast. West Coast is a little different, but the East Coast is coming on strong. We have great builders over here. Eddie Trotter, Kendall Johnson, me, Thug Custom Cycles, uh, Billy Lane, Bling Cycles. We got some guys over here that can really run the show great. And just having that whole click over here on the, on the East Coast is awesome. We could do what we want on the East Coast. We could do what we want on the mid, mid Coast. So that's where the bikes are really taking off. And I did fall in love with Jesse James back in the days. I loved his builds. I loved his. I loved what he was doing and stuff like that. Some of his stuff I didn't like, but that's all fine because it's an artist. You don't have to like everything, but you're gonna like a lot of it. And that's what makes me really love what I do. I sit there and make every bike a piece of art. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson along with Hank Longo. Great to have Lucas with us. Yeah, fascinating that, you know, he's coaching one team and playing on the other. So uh, he gets a workout every day, I'm sure. Last, but, uh, last name is Mark Teixeira, the uh, baseball Yeah, and baseball just, uh, just great to hear that story and how well they're doing. Wishing them all the luck when they go to the Final Four. It'd be nice to see them bring home the, the trophy. That's, that's just amazing, 16-0. Sure. and 0, that's, that's almost so a lot to of. it. Oh. A lot to it, being yeah, able to manage the game and switch the 
sub the right players in and out when you need to. And I don't and think they want to leave uh, the Lake Myrtle Park. They're undefeated no, they're there. they're undefeated there. That's, that's, that's the way it's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got more conversation. We've got somebody to thank. And in fact, it's one of my favorite places to go. Harborside, thank you so much for uh, supporting this segment of Sports Central. We appreciate it. Well, absolutely. We've got Dave and Dawn over there. Mm -hmm. Dawn, my girlfriend who doesn't know it. That doesn't know it, yeah. It's <laughs> probably good that she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been right there in the water too. It's beautiful. Oh, it's this time exquisite. of year, you just look out at sunset. It's uh, yeah. it's fantastic. Well, we do have another tropic star with us, who just happens to be the GM. That's Andrew Ross. Andrew, thanks so much for joining. It's great to see you. I get to, this is like the Andrew Ross day for, uh, for <laughs> me. I get to see this later this afternoon, as well. But uh, I mean, you've got to really be really be proud of what you've accomplished here, and you know, Doc Ikavitas. He's, uh, he's put together a team, second to none. He has. I mean, it's just been in, incredible to see. And people may not know this about Doc, but he has a wealth of knowledge in, in the game itself. And he's been coaching amateur teams to national championships and national final fours for almost you know a decade. So yeah. he's got a wealth of experience, but now he's got the experience plus the players that he really needs to. Now we've obviously jumped into the UPSL as a higher level than just the USASA. But... Um, it's exciting. Now, he also has a pretty big rivalry, as Lucas mentioned, with the Bavarians. Um, actually, the Bavarians have beat his amateur team in that Final Four for the past, I think, three times that they've played each other in the Final Four. So there is a lot of history with him personally, with his other, with his old team, with the Kickers, yeah. before it became the Tropics. So hopefully on the Tropics name, we, we can get that win. <laughs> <laughs> well, under a new name, it's, yeah. I mean, it's just... That's awesome. It, it was great to have Lucas on first, too, because that would get a little insight into what's going on. And he didn't talk much about his strategies and stuff like that, did he? Well, he probably doesn't want anybody to really know what his strategies are and, uh, leading into the game. You don't know <laughs> if you got some spy out there yeah. watching, you know. But that's a big part of soccer, though. A lot of people don't talk about it as much. But, you know, strategy, go, especially when you go into a championship series like coming up. That's, it's that's it's huge. a huge part of it. I mean, and the nice people don't even know. Like Lucas spends hours watching film from these other teams. So mm -hmm. you know, and he watches every game that they possibly recorded within the past six months. So uh, he does spend a ton of time. It's actually funny. We uh, I remember one time we released our lineup three hours early before a game, and um, Dr. Yakovides was like, "What are we doing? We can't tell them, you know, our formation and our lineup and everything." So we. You know, because we have a sponsor that sponsors our presenting lineup. So yes, we make sure now not to share any tactics. You know, it's we're not we don't tell what type of style we're going to come in and playing. We just yeah. keep all that on the back end. You know, and we we limited that to 30 minutes before kickoff. Now that we release the lineup and everything, but he spends so many hours. You know, watching that sometimes late because he's you know coaching our camp. You know, this mm -hmm. week and everything. So it's just we want to get these guys involved as involved in the community as we can. But uh, there is so much strategy that goes on behind it. I mean, he's got every game, you know, probably 20 or 30 pieces of paper that have different formations based off of how the team comes at us, uh, you know, and, and all, there's so much almost a science behind the formations that he does and the things that he has to do to adjust in a game. Someone mm -hmm. gets injured, a red card, you know, those are all things that you have to be prepared and to know the players that are on your bench, how you're going to adjust if something like that occurs. You know, that's interesting because, um, you know, when I watch soccer, and I enjoy watching soccer, I don't watch it a, a lot because I just don't watch TV all that much because I'm out doing my own thing and not sitting in the house in front of a television. Yeah. But um, when, as for me, just a commoner watching it, you know, you can see them setting up plays or some of the plays that they're doing. Of course, you never know where the ball's going to go, it looks like sometimes. But, um, it would be interesting to know just all the strategies that go on to because once you see that I'm sure it's more um, engulfing to watch the game mm -hmm. when you see all this other stuff going on that you know uh, for somebody like me I don't really understand all of that but every great good team um, watches video and that you I mean in, in trying to tell kids that there's more to in a sport, there's always homework, you know, mm -hmm. and the best in the world are always studying 
what's going on in the game and in hopes to get better and be able to you know defend themselves better against the team they're going up against. Yeah, and I think U.S. soccer too is is really trying to hone in on that. You know, for for myself, like I coach in our youth club with a U16 competitive girls team, and there's just so much access to educational pieces and things mm -hmm. that you now have access to that 10 years ago when I started coaching, they didn't have it was it. it was pretty much hey you know the game of soccer. All right, have you ever coached before? No. All right, well get out there and you know figure it out. Give you it know? A <laughs> yeah, versus now there's just so much of a wealth of knowledge that can teach and can teach someone who maybe even like yourself like if you have a kid who's in soccer you could still learn the game from some of these tutorials that they have out and it's really just opening up to allow just someone who may not know a lot about you know they call it the beautiful game for a reason because it is beautiful to watch how they build out from the back and then into the midfield and then create plays in the front and then score one of those freak goals you know that's that's what it's all about so uh, but we've had a great season it's just been incredibly exciting out of Lake Myrtle and we would have done anything we could in the world to have hosted that national championship there, but unfortunately, we were late. You know, it was already in Texas, and that was a sign before the season even started. But we do wish we could have had that home turf well, because we enjoyed it. Is there the opportunity that you could get a nationals here? Is there oh, quite yeah. a procedure to go through in order to, you know, get the sanctioning or whatever they yeah, do to yeah, host it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you know that's you know he mentioned we're we're talking about it now. You know, about the different things that we need to do to be able to host these type of games. We wish we did because out in Weatherford, Texas, you know, then at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I don't imagine there's going to be a whole lot of fans. We actually have some fans who are flying out too wow. um, that we know of. So, you know, myself flying out, our front office is coming. So we'll be loud and proud in, in there. But if we had hosted it here, I mean, it would have been, you know, that place would have been sold out and packed. Even for the Open Cup game, you know, there wasn't a seat in the whole entire, even on the whole burn was filled. So wow. um, we're really excited about, you know, the opportunity to just keep hosting higher and higher caliber games out there. I think it make a huge, huge difference. Well, this is the fourth year mm -hmm. for the Tropics. You know, you've got three professional teams. <laughs> for a lot of people, they go, oh, you've got the Tropics here, you got the Tropics here, you have this, the girls team. Break it all down yeah. for, and, and it's a very simple yeah, terms. yeah. So, you know, what's what's actually unique about us is we are the only club right now that currently exists that has both indoor and outdoor professional soccer in our market. Um, it's a unique model. We said, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to make us different and make us stand out? And we've seen some success with that so far. Um, what you will probably see, so you have the Florida Tropics, mm -hmm. that's the indoor team. Mm -hmm. That's the marquee franchise that we have right now. That was the first franchise, that's where everything started. And uh, what league do they play in? And that's in the Major Arena Soccer League. So that's also, uh, they'll actually just be announcing today at one o'clock, two conferences. Um, so we'll have teams all across the Midwest and East Coast and then teams in the wow. Southwest and West Coast. Um, so that's a fully national. That we have to fly to Baltimore, St. Louis, Kansas City, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. um, and versus, this is for your indoor. And that's for the indoor teams. So wow. that's what starts up in November. And so how many teams? It sounds like there's going to be quite a number of teams. 17 in, teams 17 are, in, teams. are in, in that league. Yep. Wow. So everywhere from Seattle, Washington to San Diego to uh, we have a local rivalry in Orlando now, mm -hmm. so you know that's that is the highest level of professional indoor soccer, and that's what people have been watching for. So this is it. You're at the top of the we game. We are at the here. top in in wow. at the RP funding center, and some people don't realize that. I think because maybe. Uh, I've noticed that they almost like hinder the fact that Lakeland is in a Tampa or Orlando. Like, how could a major league team like that be playing here? And that's that has nothing to you know. It's we're we're happy where we are. You know, I this would is our think home. that maybe it might be a little more. Um, a little easier for you to operate not being in Orlando and Tampa. It is definitely easier to operate. Um, we're able to connect with, I think, on a better level with both our fans and with our corporate partners because mm -hmm. it, it is a little bit of a smaller market. Um, we're able to get in front of them a little bit easier and just really connect. And once people come, they're hooked. Like, I've never had anybody come to a game and not say, one of the best sporting events that, that I've ever been to. So it's just about that educational piece of, hey, spend a night, go to the RP Funding Center, watch this team play. And the team that we have coming in this year is going to be very, very exciting to watch. We signed seven of the top 20 free agents in the league. Um, really? wow. Yeah, so I mean, we are bringing in a powerhouse. You know, we're the, the goal is obviously make the playoffs, but it'd be nice to, to go beyond that. Um, we missed out on our playoffs in the first three years. It was a very frustrating uh, situation because everyone in our office, we're you know, we love saying we're champions. You know, we are not going to sit back and just, you know, accept, you know, getting by just normally. We want to win you, you and wanna we win. want people to be proud of, you know, the, the shirt that they're buying and be proud of the team that we brought here. We did. So it's the the Lakeland Tropics then are the is the outdoor team. So it plays in Auburn. We need to get that name changed, Hank. That's your job. 
to get the new thing. <laughs> so well, well, actually, actually, so we actually had two outdoor teams this year. So the Lakeland Tropics still played in Lakeland. That's the USL team. Okay, the, that's right. The senior team, which is a team that's going national championship, we actually called just Tropics SC this year because leagues required us to have different names. That will change next year. That will probably just be the Florida Tropics. Indoor, Florida Tropics, outdoor, that'll be branded across. Okay. The Lakeland Tropics will focus more on our youth club and our youth development. Um, so that will be more of our U23 team next season. Okay. Uh, we will focus on, we actually played one of our youth club players, local guy um, named Chandler Cr Cr Crawshaw, I think his last name is, and he's 15 years old and he went and played on the field and actually had an assist in the final game for the USL two seasons. So wow. um, the focus will be to develop players who then can buy into the system of the indoor outdoor as we continue to see how the outdoor structure, because it's all very new. You know, these mm -hmm. leagues and these different levels in every other country, it's very simple. It's you win division five, you move up to division four. Mm -hmm. Here there's many different levels, so we're just trying to find the best fit for us to provide a high level competition coming in, but then B, make sure that uh, a team of our caliber is, is competing and, and winning. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. So there's got those three teams, but there's a women's team too. Yes, so the women's team, um, we actually partnered with Pinellas County United, which is a big youth club in, in mm -hmm. St. Petersburg, um, and we took over their women's franchise. The women's league is a little complicated. It's only, a, a, it's pretty much a month long, uh, so it's very hard to brand, but um, the goal next year will be actually to uh, bring that team also to be playing, hopefully at Lake Myrtle, and then we can have everything going on there with yeah. you know branding because we get a lot of people asking, hey, when's the women's game playing? But unfortunately, the scheduling they were playing at like 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings and yeah. just Everybody's getting in games. Church. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there yeah. was no, there, it was tough to brand. But next year we will be um, upping that game a lot because we want to make sure that, especially for our youth, they see that path on both the men's and the women's side. Fantastic. Fantastic. These, are, you know, I can sit here and talk another hour, yeah. you know, about this yeah. type of stuff. We're going to have a chance to do that a little bit later this yeah. afternoon, yep. and and uh, all of that type of stuff. Number one, congratulations. Thank you. I think that's awesome. Hope you guys win. Um, we'll be uh, anxiously awaiting the news, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and, you guys for uh, having me. You're welcome, welcome man. Fantastic. Always and fun we'll, talking uh, with you. Like like we said, we'll get uh, come back with that trophy. We'll bring it up, put it right up here, there right? You go. Right up here on the table. All yeah. right. So well, like right, right there. <laughs> That's a good place for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody, you know, Hank and I were talking the, at the beginning of the show about a, a huge opening here in Polk County. If you're into water sports, this is the place to be. If you're into yeah. water sports in the state of Florida, this is the place to be, yeah. particularly toad water sports. When I say toad, that could mean a right. boat, could mean a personal uh, watercraft, or a cable park. What's a cable park? Well, check this out. Hank and Mark will be back right after this. Elite Cable Park. But on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, I want to welcome you to the official ribbon cutting of the Elite Cable Park, Arbordale's newest gym. We thank Action Water, Spark, Water Parks for investing in Polk County, and we hope they're prepared to meet some of the kindest folks in the world. We're all about family in Polk County, and so are water sports, making this the perfect fit for us and the city of Arbordale. Today, the waters of Lake Myrtle will come alive as wakeboarders and water skiers are propelled via cables overhead, but this facility is just the first step toward the future. What you're going to see on the water out here is a world-class cable park. Action parks are the industry leaders in the world in this. And, uh, and to have them out here operating, we've really pulled together the A-team to make this as world-class as, as possibly. And of course, God has guided it to make sure he took it even a, another level beyond that. And, and we're so thankful for all of you here.
when a vision, when someone looked across Lake Merlin thought, like-minded individuals gathered and formed a plan. Emails were sent, phone calls were made, and visits to the local city and county government offices were made. A whole lot of visits. Committee, uh, uh, committees were formed, investors came together, who too looked across Lake Myrtle and saw a vision, they could see the future. Action Parks, we're thrilled to have our third cable park here, but for us, it really comes back to making life better. And what I'm really excited about today is everyone here is gonna have the opportunity to experience this. But what I'm even more excited about is the long-term memories and experiences and friendships that are gonna be made and shared with us here at LE Cable Park. The real long-term vision, you know, should cable wakeboarding, you know, go into the games ever, this would become an Olympic training center. And for the city, for this county, for this region, when you have them promoting your area and your stuff takes it to a whole different level. So we're proud with what the city has done with the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex and all the soccer and what it's going to do for the families that come here, the fellowships, the, the memories people are going to make here. That's what we're all about here. And um, it's just going to be fantastic. And, and this is just phase one, and it's been a long road. And thanks to everyone that's, that's stepped up to help us here and the teams. And we look forward to the phase two and, and really making this a one-of-a-kind destination anywhere in the world with the unique features we're going to bring when the Halls of Fame, the International Hall of Fame, the U.S. Hall of Fame, the National Gov Olympic National Governing Body, our foundation headquarters, the rooftop garden, meeting spaces, it's just going to be, there's not going to be another destination that could replicate it being with the entities that we brought together. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson along with Mr. Hank Lungo. It makes you want to just get out there and rock it, doesn't it? It makes you want to go out there and do it, that's for sure. Are those knees going to hold up? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> kind of hard getting up sometimes. But hey, we want to thank the folks at the Hilton Garden Inn in Lakeland for sponsoring our third segment here on Sports Central. Well, we've got uh, a lot of superstars in, in Polk County from, you know, young to Hank's age, even older, yeah. if that's yeah. possible. Well, call, hey, as long as you're calling me a superstar, I don't <laughs> care how old I got to be. <laughs> well, some of those superstars uh, are living down in Fort Meade right now, and they won mm -hmm. the state championships, Babe Ruth State Baseball Championships. And here to talk to us about it is their head coach, Jamel Cornelius. And uh, when you talk about sports in Fort Meade, you know, you can't help but think of Andrew McCutcheon and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of other famous guys and girls out of that, out of that small little town. Yeah. But Jamel, you know, you've taken this team from spring training. Yeah. All, now you've won the state championships and you're going in to play the World Series. Yeah, we, uh, we started back in February mm -hmm. um, with the guys and we have a league and uh, we had three teams in this division. Uh, you play a um, regular season, and from that, you pick an all-star team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had 12 guys that we selected, and 
they're a good group. We played in a couple preseason tournaments in Polk County uh, over in Winter Haven. We played one over there and then went to one in Arbondale. Um, then we had our district tournament. It was held up in North Lakeland mm -hmm. and we was fortunate enough to win that. And then we went to Bristol, Florida and competed against some teams up in that area and uh, we was able to win the state title. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, uh, a lot of these kids have uh, been playing together a long time. Uh, my son is on the team, and he went. To, they went to state last year, and the um, year before that, and just weren't able to, to win it. And this year, was able to put it all together, and uh, it's exciting for the guys. Yeah. And what was the score of the game that they won when they won the state championship? Well, the, the final game, it, it, was, a, it was crazy. We, we went to, uh, it was held in Bristol. Okay. Bristol is a small area up in up in the Pan North Florida, 30 minutes past Tallahassee. Uh, we got rooms. Mm -hmm. I know where Bristol is now that you we, say we that. We got rooms. Um, first, we started in um, Mariana. Okay. And uh, we had to switch rooms one night. So the night of the championship, we got done at the ballpark around 9:30, 10 o'clock. They had weather coming in. We went back to Mariana, which is central time. So when we got back, it was 12 o'clock that time, and we had to be back at the ballpark at 10 o'clock in the morning. So they went to bed at 12, got up at 6. We rode over to the ballpark. Um, they had a really good pitcher. The rules are just, you know, they try to save the kid's arm. The previous game, he was not able to pitch because the game before that, he threw a no-hitter. Oh, my God. But he had to rest. Uh, he wasn't able to come into the game until 10.45. Well, the game started at 10, and uh, they held us off for a while, and they got him in there, and he, he was willing and dealing. Uh, we were fortunate to win that one 4-3. Uh, to um, wow. There at the end, we got a sack fly from one of our guys, and, and we was able to hold him off, so we won 4-3. Wow. So that's, uh, <laughs> you know, and these young kids, they, they really play some fascinating ball yeah they do I mean the pitchers like I mean it's that you bring that up because you know that's been a problem in the past is they you know they keep these young guys pitching and pitching and then you know it could you know cause damage to a shoulder or something so that they're not maturing quick enough to be able to handle that much you know throwing of the ball and then when it's time to go to high school ball or something they're they're already worn out so it's I'm uh, it's very critical that you know you monitor that which is good to hear that they're doing yeah they have a lot of rules in place for that um, just to make sure the kids like you said their arms are are important to them and uh, they're doing a good job with that they got you know you throw a certain amount of pitches I think in a game if you go over 40 pitches you automatically have to rest for 48 hours uh, oh. So we, we it's that tight, huh? Yeah, we keep a good gauge. Yeah. You go over 60 uh, pitches, it's even longer. So um, they do a good job with that. Yeah. And and how fast are these kids throwing the ball? I tell you what, um, <laughs> we play. Uh, it's a kid out of Franklin County. His last name is Eric Crumby. That kid was throwing the ball. They clocked him, I think, one time at 75 miles per hour. Oh my! At that and short he's under distance. 12. Yes. Oh at that my short God. distance, and he was a lefty. Wow. Uh, so we saw him one night, and uh, yeah, he, he can throw it. So it, these kids, they throw the ball pretty hard. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. What, you know, to be able to coach a team like that, we were 18-0 and 0 or something this year? Yeah, we're 18-0 and 0, um, when you include all, you know, the preseason and the pre-tournaments. But yeah. uh, like I said, we, this is a good group of kids, man. Yeah. They, they really listen. And um, what makes them good? They listen? And they listen. They listen. And also, uh, you know, I coach, but we have uh, – John Conley Barnett, Scott Harrell. Both of those guys coach at the varsity level in Fort Meade. They coach for the baseball team with Coach Spradlin, and um, they come over, and I, and I kind of let them handle the, the strategy stuff. I'm more of the rah-rah, motivating them, keeping them in line type of thing. Uh, you know, I got a football background. I played baseball, but I, I'm primarily a football background, so those guys do a real good job with them. John Conley Barnett actually played a little professional ball and then Scott Harrell, he was able to play some, uh, he played at uh, Warner for a little bit. So we have some really good coaches. And then also the parents, uh, they support us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the kids listen, they work hard, and uh, we, we have some kids that's pretty talented. That's fantastic. Well, you said you were uh, you had baseball, but also more of a football background. What, yes, tell us about that. Well, you know, I coach at the high school. I just finished my 10th year coaching, heading to my 11th season. 
And I, I grew Mead? at Fort Meade. I wow. grew up in Fort Meade. I played football at Fort Meade, and then I was fortunate enough to uh, to go to the University of Florida. I played there, graduated in 2006. Uh, the year I graduated, we won a national title, and I, you know, I was uh, fortunate enough to. I bounced around the NFL for a little bit. Um, That's fascinating. So yeah, I, I I'm more of a football guy, uh, <laughs> but my my kids, my son play baseball, my daughter do softball. Uh, my dad raised me playing baseball. Andrew McCutcheon, uh, his dad coached me a little bit. Um, we grew up. We kind of we grew up. He's a little younger than me, but we was all at, always at the ballpark together. For a while down at Fort Meade, there was no youth football. Uh, hmm. It was only baseball. Um, they started youth football when I was in the seventh grade. So coming up, that's all I did was baseball. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what position did you play in football? Um, I played quarterback in high school, and then when I got to the University of Florida, I, I switched over to receiver. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Huh. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Looking Ken, at Ken going. Riley. <laughs> like Ken Riley, you know. He's, he's the most started. unassuming guy. Yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. He should you know. be in the Hall of Fame, but he started off as a quarterback, yeah. and then when he got into yeah. the pros, they put him in defensive back, yeah. which is, you know, sometimes um, the – They'll see that there's there's more of a talent there than the yeah. than the athlete might recognize themselves. Yeah, when you're in high school, you know a lot of times a quarterback they just find the most athletic guy <laughs> on the field and just give him the ball. I can throw it around because yeah. you you want him to have the ball because he's gonna have the ball in his hands pretty much every play on offense. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Well, you're representing Fort Meade. Mm -hmm. A lot of weight on your shoulders, I would think, because the last time, and it's funny that you under, uh, mentioned, mentioned Andrew McCutcheon. The last time Fort Meade went to the World Series, Andrew McCutcheon Andrew was, was playing, playing in yeah. 1999. Yeah, correct. So that's, uh, does he know you guys are going? Yeah, he, he's aware. Um, you know, like you said, that, that team was a good team. Yeah. Uh, we have, I think, a couple of kids are related to some of the players that was on the team oh, in, really? in 1999. And, and that's what I tell people. I mean, the last time we, we sent a group, Andrew McCutcheon was on the team. So maybe within these 12 guys, we may be, we may have the next big thing out of Fort Meade. You know, and that's, I, I'm fascinated by that in the sense that, you know, you watch a young athlete grow up and, and mature and uh, like with Ray Lewis, you know, we followed him through high school. Mm -hmm. Then you see him playing at the University of Miami and uh, then he goes on to to play professional ball with Baltimore, yep. and we had his induction in the Hall of Fame at the uh, at the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex, where we have a Florida or the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame yep. museum, and we had a special induction for him. And just you know, to, to to see him there as a mature man, but to to remember how he came all the way up the ladder in the ranks, it's just. It's neat to see that happen. I'm sure with Andrew, when you're hometown to watch him, yeah, you know, play little definitely. league ball, then the next thing you know, he's a superstar most in major league baseball. It's a pretty, pretty neat thing. Well, it's it's, it's a tough road to hoe to uh, not only to get to the World Series, but to get to the World Series. In other words, the cost of getting up there is is pretty tough for some of these families that. Um, you know, maybe struggling more than others. Yeah. Um, you have a GoFundMe page, and, and if people want to get behind this World Series team, Fort Meade World Series team, how can they do it? Where, can you give us some information so we can ultimately get it up on the screen? Yes, uh, we have a GoFundMe page on Facebook. It's, um, you can log on to Facebook. It's the Fort Meade Dixie Youth Baseball page. It's, it's real simple to find. We've got a GoFundMe page there. Um, also, we have um, P.O. Box 782. Um, down in Fort Meade, Florida, 33841. Uh, you can make your checks payable to Fort Meade Dixie Youth Baseball. Um, we, we've been doing a pretty good job fundraising. A lot of people um, pitching in, like you said. It, it's tough on the, on the families. We already took one trip. It was five hours away. Now we're going eight hours away. It's exciting for the kids, but like you said, it, it does cost And you got to put them up for the night. You yes, got to feed them. You got to put them in a in a motel room and and, and for a lot of them it's probably the furthest they've ever been away from home yes sir correct you know that's uh i mean this is a big and it, it could for some maybe the highlight of their their sports yeah. career may not well, that's going to be hopefully it's not remember the rest of their life Ab though, absolutely too. well that's that's some exciting stuff and you know jamel the, the the opportunity to take a team as the head coach to the world series is phenomenal 
Yeah. Congratulations to yeah. you. Obviously, your sports career is, you know, giving back now. Yes, you sir. know, and you're a star at, at Florida and, uh, you know, like you said, bouncing around the NFL a little bit. But uh, this is uh, truly remarkable. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, mm -hmm. great to have you on. And hopefully we'll get you back on when you come back with that trophy, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. there you go. <laughs> Jamal, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Well, we have a Jamal, but it's spelled differently. His name is Jamal Norris, and he's a basketball player at the Vanguard School. Got some action from him, a few insights into how he's peaked as well. Check this out. Hank and Mark will be back with our local update right after this. First time I played basketball, I was I was kind of born into it because my dad played when I was younger, and he actually had a game the day I was born, and he came after. So I've always played basketball my whole life. Me and him, we have like a really good relationship. So I always say I'm better than him than he was at my age. So and like him being a basketball player just pushes me to be better than him one day. Basketball is just always there. Like it'll never like go away. Like if you're bored, you can just pick up basketball, shoot, dribble it. There's like a lot of things you can do with it and like a, the little ball, it just has like, I have so much love for it. I haven't had like a serious injury, but like injuries, like just like having you sit out for a little bit, it affects the way you play sometimes and like getting your stamina and stuff back. So if you don't want to work hard, you really, you, it won't take you that far. So basically like in the game, you just have to like forget everything else, just listen to your coach and make sure you're focused on the game. Like even though th if there's a lot of people in the crowd, even if it's a big game, a lot of people saying things, you can't let that like get into your head or other players trash talking get into your head. You just have to keep playing and focus. If you want something, like especially in school, like if you want something, you work hard for it, you'll get it. Me and my teammates, us being like a family off the court really helps on the court because then like everything will just click on the court. And off the court, it's like, since we like go to school together, live here together, it makes us like almost like brothers. I mean, every day is a memory with us. We always have something funny happening, something interesting, especially on the trips we go to. Those are something we'll remember too. This is like, on the trips we go, it's just like, like a fun Friday type trip. Like we'll just go like, couple, one time we went mini golfing, went to like amusement park, just, and just like, just have a good time. Me and my coach, we have a really good relationship. Uh, I have a class with him. He's been he's been with me since the first day of school since I came here, um, and he's kind of like another dad for me. Um, I mean, he's talking to me every day after the games. What did I do in practice? What could I've done better? And like he always like tells me what I need to work on to be to become a good player. Yes, I do plan to play basketball in college. I thought about it. I kind of wanted thought about being a lawyer, maybe a doctor or maybe being into like sports medicine and stuff. Hey everybody, welcome back to segment number four. Wow, what an exciting show so oh, far. And just, it's been a great show. That was, you know, Jamil, he, Played we didn't NFL. talk, well, we did I mean, not talk about this on that air. Was, that was fun. So he was on the 2006 national championship. Florida team. Florida Gators. Uh, football went, went team. Went up to Buffalo and played. Went up to Buffalo, went, went to the Colts. And went to the Colts. And, and then, then went to in, uh, Arizona. Arizona. So he, he was catching passes. He was telling us. Um, Kurt he was Warner. catching passes from Kurt Warner, from um, uh, Peyton, Manning. Peyton Manning. And he said he threw it a very catchable ball. That's what he described it. Which is interesting to hear. You know, I said, did they just blast him in there? He goes, no, very catchable. Which, you know, that's 
you don't want to throw it so hard you can't hold on to it. Yeah, you know, Brett Favre was known for that. Yeah. You know, he'd break guys' fingers because yeah. he'd like to, you know. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, here we go. Hey, we want to thank the folks at Jimmy John's for sponsoring our fourth segment here on Sports Central. Absolutely. You know, that's uh, uh, exciting times. We're talking about the uh, Cable Park and, and what's coming up with that and a lot of championship events once that uh, Championship Lake gets done at the final segment. It's going to be Katie bar the doors. It's, yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. We had a great Florida State Championship this weekend out at uh, Segwaying nicely Lake until Rue. you took the yeah, bait. That's yeah, good. Yeah, I like I took it. The bait. We had a great state championship over there uh, in Polk City at Lake Rue. And uh, how many skiers uh, did you have? We in had that? like like 130 skiers. That skiing many in the event. Yeah. Well, so that's good was, to hear. Yeah, very good event. Went very well. And of course, the folks at Ski Fluid and Action Water Sports. Kiwi. And, uh, did an excellent job and just uh, delight to have all those people here in a great uh, Hall of Fame banquet and award and all the kids with their awards. Or so. That's one of the most fun things to do is watch these little kids get yeah. their awards. But anyhow, moving on, got a lot of things happening here in July. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. There's, you know, you got basketball, we have baseball, it's uh, got table tennis. tennis. In fact, uh, in fact, the Mid Florida Table Tennis uh, Tour. July Classic, July 19th through the 20th, starts today, ends tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow Saturday that is, and uh, it's United States uh, Table Tennis Association sanctioned event, and these are some of the best uh, two-star, actually, you know, these ratings change with different organizations, but it's uh, uh, some two-star players from across the southeast United States, so you can see some of the best in the, best in the country playing. Fantastic. You know, that's at Simpson Park in, uh, in Lakeland, so make yeah. sure you check that out, it's Florida. TT table tennis Florida yeah. TT.com yeah so it's tennis. a fun fun sport to watch oh it's they gas. Can yeah really hit that ball back and forth and then we've got Lakeland versus the Daytona Tortugas uh, Friday and Saturday and then Lakeland versus the Fire Frogs uh, Monday dollar hot dogs Tuesday baseball bingo Wednesday all you can eat. Hey, it, and and then they have Thursday Thursdays, Thursdays, and they brought Mark, that back because I complained so much play that they they dropped Thursday Thursdays, and they finally they brought finally, it back. They should call it Mark's Thursday Thursday Thursdays, Thursdays at the ballpark. <laughs> hey, to get a chance, make sure you check that out. Um, that is so much fun going and watching the Flying Tigers. It's oh, a relaxed it a atmosphere. Family, a family oh, affordable. You know, fun, it's just, fun activity to go to, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, then we've got the Tropic so Soccer Camp. Hey, it's not too late, everybody. I know school's coming up a little bit, but hey, you have an opportunity. You've got that little uh, munchkins out there running around and oh, there's nothing to do. Mm, well, nothing to do. I'll, to get do. You, I'll get you something to do. <laughs> and the Tropics have a soccer camp. Jeez. <laughs> at Tiger Town, which is kind of cool, age is six, 16, and uh, you can get uh, instructed. The, 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 I'm trying to hurry this up, it but it's uh, uh, the Tropic staff and other professional soccer players. How's that? For That's instance? that was good. Mm. That was good. That was that wasn't yeah. too bad. Let me give you some information how to get a hold of them, and uh, you actually you can go. It is at Tiger Town, and the last session is August 5th through the 9th. So go to Florida Tropics or the Tropics Soccer and uh, you can check it out and get your kids signed up or hey, if you want to do it too. Hey, well, Hank. we've got some great sponsors that we want to thank. The folks at The Ledger, Contempo Vacation Homes, Balmoral Resorts, Echo, Days In. Thank you so much for your support. You bet. Sports Central. Well, our next live show is going to be August 2nd, everybody. Make sure you tune us in. Got some more special guests coming up, but uh, don't forget our sister show, our ugly sister. Yeah, our ugly <laughs> so sister show. Actually, it's a great show. It's a radio on, show. On W. That's where you look the best. You look so good on well, radio. Well, you guys, I was going to say, you got a face for radio, too, there, sport model. <laughs> Beat you. Beat you to it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's on Thursdays from 5 to 6. Of course, it's 1430 AM, WLKF, and 96.7 FM. So that's and Then they can always go to our website, which is? CentralFloridaSports.com. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> or you can go. You to know, you say this thing all day long until somebody asks you, "What is it?" And you're on TV, and you got to come up with it really yeah. quick. But uh, yeah, I got a couple of shows coming up myself. Yeah, yeah you're off to the division. Show ski Division Two Nationals. Nationals. That's division up in Wisconsin, one. and then Division One. Okay. And the main reason: control the mic. And. Uh, you know, we promote Polk County as a water ski destination, yeah. so it's great stuff, everybody. Catch our next show.
August 2nd. We'll see you again next time. This is Mark Jackson for Hank Longo and Mayan Nelson and all the staff at PGTV. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next time.